Good day, Great Tools. Welcome to the second lesson in week 26. We are still looking at electrochemical reactions. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the different types of electrochemical cells. Now that we know the link between electricity and chemistry, we can look into the two types of electrochemical cells. Oxidation, reduction, or redox reactions take place in electrochemical cells. There are two types of electrochemical cells. The first type is a self-sustaining or spontaneous electrode reaction that takes place in the galvanic cell. The electrode reactions convert chemical energy into electrical energy. The battery is an example of such a cell. The second type of cell is a non-spontaneous reaction that occurs in electrolytic cells. The electrode reactions are sustained by a supply of electrical energy. In this cell, electrical energy is converted to chemical energy. An example of an electrolytic cell is molten sodium chloride that is electrolyzed to form liquid sodium and chlorine gas. Let's join Symbolelo and Nombolelo to show us the difference between these two cells and the links between electricity and chemistry. In the redox reaction, we observed the electrons were transferred over a very short distance between the copper ions and the zinc metal. But chemists decided to see what would happen if they increased the distance between the zinc metal and the copper ions. But can we really do this? Well, let's try. Okay, let's begin this experiment. Let's place a zinc plate in one beaker. And copper two sulfate in another beaker, which I've already mixed here. Now we can use connecting wires and an ammeter to form a connection. What do you notice? There's still a zero reading on the ammeter. That means we can't detect any movement of charges. What do you think the problem is? Could it be that there's no solution around the zinc plate? The zinc ions can't move from the solid into A. That's right, Nombulelo. We expect the zinc atoms on the zinc plate to form zinc ions. So we need to add a solution to the zinc beaker. The solution I'm adding is zinc sulfate, which I've already mixed here. A zinc plate in a solution of zinc sulfate is called zinc half cell. We also want copper ions to be deposited from the solution. Can we add a copper plate into a copper sulfate solution in the second beaker? Let me try. A copper plate in a copper sulfate solution is called a copper half cell. But there's no reading on the ammeter. What is the problem now? Well, let's go back to our mind map. This gives us a clue. Notice that we need a closed circuit for a charge to move. There's a connection between the zinc half cell and the copper half cell through the external wire connector. But that's not a complete circuit. We can only trace a path from the zinc plate to the copper solution, and that's only halfway around the circuit. So we need a second connection between the two half cells. And this connection must link the solutions of both cells. This is done by inserting a glass U-tube filled with a solution of potassium nitrate, which I've already prepared. This glass U-tube is called a salt bridge because it allows both positive and negative ions to move between the solutions of the half cells. Oh, I get it. We have a path to join the two solutions and this makes it closed circuit. Excellent. See what happens as we place the salt bridge between the cells. <laughs> There's a small reading on the ammeter. 
Yes, a redox reaction produces electricity when we connect the two half cells in a closed circuit. This arrangement is a special electrochemical cell called a galvanic or voltaic cell. During the chemical reactions taking place in the half cells, the chemical potential energy is converted into electrical potential energy. We can measure the potential difference between the zinc copper half cells using a voltmeter. That means we can update our mind map by writing in the word electrochemical cells between electricity and chemistry. I suggest we also add in the term redox reaction and show that a redox reaction produces a potential difference in a galvanic cell. I see what you mean. Electricity and chemistry are really related. In a galvanic cell, there are redox chemical reactions which involve transfer of electrons and this creates a potential difference. Charged particles move through a closed circuit and we've made electricity. Yes, well summarized Nombulelo. But the reverse process is also possible using a different type of electrochemical cell. We use electricity to force a redox reaction to take place. Let's take a look at an example of this process. Let's move this experiment away. Here we have a beaker containing copper 2 chloride. First, we insert two graphite rods called electrodes into the solution. Then we connect the electrodes to a power supply and see what happens. Notice how there are bubbles of gas forming at the positive electrode and at the negative electrode a red orange coating of copper appears on the graphite electrode. The smell of gas reminds me of a swimming pool so the gas must be chlorine and the coating on the electrode must be copper metal. The process in which electricity is passed through a solution of ions or electrolyte to produce elements is called electrolysis. And this type of electrochemical cell is called an electrolytic cell. I get it. Electrochemistry is about electrochemical cells that either use redox reaction to make electricity or cells that use electricity to make chemical reaction take place. Yes, Nombulelo. It looks like you have a good picture of how electricity and chemistry are linked in electrochemistry. Thank you, Simbulelo and Nombulelo. So we understand the differences, but are there any similarities? Both type of cells contain electrodes where the oxidation and reduction reactions occur. Oxidation occurs at the electrode termed the anode and reduction occurs at the electrode called the cathode. Here is a clever way to remember this. Think of these pictures. An ox because oxidation takes place at the anode. And red cat since reduction takes place at the cathode. So let's just revise what we learned in the video. First of all, there's a galvanic cell. A galvanic cell is a self-sustaining electrode reaction. In other words, it is spontaneous, it happens by itself, and there is conversion of chemical energy to electrical energy. So basically, this is the same as what we had have when, as a battery or a cell, when we put things, batteries, pennant batteries, or double A's, triple A's, into our torches, etc. So that there's a conversion of chemical energy to electrical energy. An electrolytic cell is actually the opposite reaction. Yeah, electrolytic reaction is sustained by the supply 
of electrical energy, okay? And there's a conversion of electrical energy to chemical energy. But what's important is that with both of these, it doesn't matter if we're looking at the galvanic cell or the electrolytic cell, oxidation always occurs at the anode and reduction always occurs at the cathode. And we use the ox or anox, anox or red cat to help us remember that. So red cat, red cat stands for reduction occurs at the cathode, whereas anox is that oxidation occurs at the anode. Grade 12s, please make sure you know this and that you learned this theory from this lesson and then go check your ability in to enable assessments.